What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Against All Odds podcast. I'm here with Colton Haskin, and um, I'm just going to sit down and hear his story. You are from Oklahoma. From Oklahoma, yeah. yes. And where were you born? I was born in Oklahoma City. The okay. Mustang is actually only two by six mile radius town. So we did not have a hospital. So I was born in Oklahoma City. Okay, but you lived in Mustang? Born and raised in Mustang, yeah. How is it living in that small? I've never <laughs> so, ever lived in a city like. Or, or can you call it a city? Like, was it a town? We're a town. <laughs> we're a town. So it's. I mean, it's it is super small by radius, but I mean, I mean, we're right outside Oklahoma City. I mean, we are we're grown, highly populated. I mean, it's not it's not what you would typically typically think of as a small town. Whenever you think of it, two by six miles, like oh wow, like that's a really tiny town. But I mean, it's it's popular and. Yeah. Lots, of, lots of people and stuff. And you can go to OKC. Yeah. All yeah, the fun yeah stuff. you're literally 10 minutes away from OKC. And when did you start playing soccer? So I started playing soccer at the age of four. Um, whenever it was the first year in Oklahoma that you can start playing soccer. And uh, my mom was actually my coach. Um, she'll probably get mad at me for not knowing how many years she was my coach. But it was <laughs> it was for, for a few years before I went into um, competitive soccer. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, and did your mom play soccer? She did. So my mom played soccer since she was little until all the way up until the end of high school. Did she have an opportunity to go play in college? You or? know, I don't remember. So funny story. The women's coach, the women's high school head coach at Mustang was my mom's high school coach. Really? So my mom went to Putnam City mm-hmm. and her high school soccer coach at the time is now coaching at Mustang. Well, actually, I think he just retired, but... So he was my mom's, because I would have conversations with him about my mom, and he would he would hype my mom up all the time and said she was the, the fastest girl he ever coached or whatever. So um, I'm sure she probably could have, but she, she wanted to get married and have kids and start a family and and uh, wasn't really into pursuing soccer. Yeah, so. so that's where you get your speed from? I guess that's where <laughs> I get my speed from. I owe that to my mom. Yeah. And so did your dad play? He didn't play soccer. No, so dad didn't play soccer. Dad grew up uh, football and wrestling, which... Uh, my dad would probably argue that I got my speed from him because he, he, he says he's he was fast. Um, I'm sure he was, but but my mom was really fast as well. So my dad was definitely your typical American dad, just football loving, wrestling loving. He was he was very good. He was actually a two time state champion wrestler. Wow. In high school, yeah. Wow. And three or four year varsity let him let him in for for football. So my dad, both my parents were super athletic. Uh huh. Which helps. Yeah, yeah. So they were probably pushing sports with like everything. Right? You know, they really weren't. They really? weren't really pushing it. No. Um, I think I just grew up and I was just intrigued with sports from the very beginning. So they never really had to force it onto me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just it just kind of happened. I started off playing, you know, t-ball and I wrestled in, in middle school and high school a little bit and and I played football too. But soccer definitely was just the one that that stayed consistent through all of it. Do you have any siblings? I do. I have a younger brother and two older sisters. And do they play a lot of sports too? No. Really? Of them. I'm really? the only one who plays sports, yeah. Wow. My brother actually uh, played football for a couple seasons. Didn't really like it. It was, you know, it was good. It was mm-hmm. decent, but just didn't really like sports. He he loves hunting, fishing, outdoors. Oklahoma guy. Huh? He's, he's, <laughs> a, whenever, he's a stereotypical Oklahoma, uh, for sure. That's, that's funny. Yeah. Huh. How did, so... Do you think your uh, your parents' favorite then? <laughs> well, I can't answer that on camera, <laughs> just in case my brother watches. But uh, off camera, definitely the favorite is child. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, and then, so you said you were playing at a recreational level. Your mom was coaching. Right. Um, were you at, even at that stage? Were you doing extra training at all like, with your mom, or going out to the park and um, playing? Or not really. I can always remember from. From the time that I can think that I was the youngest, I always had a soccer ball in the house. So mm-hmm. It was just always dribbling around the house. Like if I was making a trip from my bedroom to the bathroom, I'd take a soccer ball with me. If I was going to the kitchen, soccer ball with me. My mm-hmm. parents didn't like the ball in the house too much, but <laughs> I I just always remember I'd have uh, a soccer ball at my foot in the house, and and even I, I would go um, outside. I remember we had a we had a wall um, on the on the outside of our house with two windows on it. And I would just constantly kick the ball back at the wall, back at the wall, back at the wall. Ended up breaking that window. I don't know how many times. I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask. Literally, that I, I I swear to God, I can't make this up. 
one day I broke the same window twice. It was like double layered mm -hmm. and I had like kicked it out the window, broke it, like ran inside, cried for like, I don't know how long, came back out, was like, I'm just not going to kick it very hard. Mm -hmm. Legitimately broke the same window again. I was like, I'm done. I'm sorry forever. <laughs> Never playing music. That's, that's, just, that's, that's just how it is being kids. Like, because you don't, you don't have like a field in your backyard. Yeah, yet. it's not like I would just like <laughs> drive myself to the nearest, you know, yeah. soccer field. So. Yeah, no, I mean, so it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily like, oh, I'm going to go out and I'm just going to do extra work. It was always just like, I just want to go kick the soccer ball around. Mm -hmm. And then um, when did you make the switch from like playing recreational to club, like more, more so, intense? So I want to say like around the age of 12, I think mm -hmm. typically in Oklahoma, that's whenever they, they make the switch from, from rec to competitive. Um, and I joined, excuse me, the club, Canadian Valley, CVFC. Uh, we were just a really small club based out of Yukon, Oklahoma, which is just right next door to Mustang. And um, being at Canadian Valley, we were always the underdogs in Oklahoma. We were one of the smallest clubs, mm -hmm. underfunded, and um, and there were a lot of really good and big clubs in Oklahoma. There was uh, Norman, Celtic, mm -hmm. their club, and in Edmond, there's TSC, um, then up in Tulsa, you know, every club was was bigger and bigger and better than than us. So, uh -huh. so we were always the underdogs, and and really the mentality of of me and my teammates, who are still my best friends today, was really like, let's just go have fun. Like we just want to go, we just want to go play a little bit of footy. We're not, we didn't have the pull of players like like some of the clubs did. You know, I yeah. mean, it was. I mean, to be honest, it was like if you come to tryouts, you're probably gonna make the team. So, <laughs> I mean, we, I mean. We weren't very good, yeah. I mean, to be honest. We did, we didn't, we didn't win a lot of games, and we had some, we had some pretty good soccer players, um, but just not competitive. Didn't have good attitudes, good mentalities. We just kind of wanted to hang out with the friends. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it's interesting too, because it's like, and at the club level, like it's a competitive level, but like what you're saying, like there's different levels of like how serious it is from like oh, yeah. full on pro academy to like yeah, club. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, but still, this is a higher level than recreation. Right, you're right. Higher level, good players. Um, but I mean, just just things like a bunch of different coaches, you know, mm -hmm. throughout the years, and just you'd have, you know, maybe ten guys show up to training at best, yeah, and just like days, yeah. you'd have like two subs <laughs> for the game. So it was just, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. We just weren't really good. Yeah. So, and it's cool the two that those are your best friends to like. To right. Play. Yeah. And, That's and, a good environment. Then, and least. whenever I get into like some you know super serious soccer talks with people and they're like, "Yo, like you were good. Like why didn't you want to like switch clubs or whatever?" My answer was always like, "Man, I was just having fun with my friends. Yeah. Like I was I was loyal to my friends. I mean, on the other side, whenever I was younger, it was like a forty five minute drive to the two better clubs in Oklahoma, um, to Norman and to Edmond." And whenever I was younger, my mom, uh, my parents didn't really want to make the drive, you know, three times a week. Yeah. We only trained twice a week. Those teams probably trained three or four times a week. <laughs> and, I, I mean, I was just super young. So soccer wasn't that serious to be driving, you know, an hour and a half commute. Mm -hmm. And so, and then whenever I got older, I was just like, I don't want to leave my family. Like, these are my best friends. Yeah. Like, now you've been there for year after year after year. Yeah. And so when, how long did you play on that team? So from 12 until? Yeah, literally the entire time. Never until changed 18. Teams. Yeah. Wow. Until, until I went to college. And then, so the team relatively stayed pretty much the same? Yeah, we had, I mean, honestly, like my, my best friends, my closest friends on the team, you know, us six or seven mm -hmm. stayed on the team pretty much from the very beginning um, to whenever we left. Um, we did have one of my best friends who left, Cutter Smith, and came back the next year. He went down to the 95s. We, we haven't forgotten that yet. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but, I mean, other than that, I mean, it was pretty much the entire the entire core. You know, you'd have other guys because, yeah. I mean, we, we weren't, you know, the desired club to play for. So kids were leaving and coming. But for the, for, for the most part, we had the same guys, uh -huh. which, which made it fun. Yeah, yeah. And were you always, always playing right back? I mean, I've never said you're a, a right back, outside back, right? Outside back, yeah. yeah. Uh, no. Funny story about that. So my entire life, I've grown up an attacking player. Mm -hmm. I've always been a forward or an outside mid. And um, whenever I got into high school, actually, um, I went to Mustang High School. And um, I actually started playing the 10. I was one of the, the better players on the team. And so, you know, at the high school level, you kind of want yeah. those guys to be on the ball a little more. Center, yeah, yeah. yeah. Put, them in the, put them in the center of the park. So I started playing the 10 in high school and um, definitely was not my position. 
<laughs> but uh, in high school level, you can make it work. Yeah, at high school level, it was fine. I played played forward in in, in attacking mid, and then so whenever I went to college, I I was just a winger, um, and then so a winger my freshman year, sophomore year, my junior year, we were in preseason. I had came in and I was like. This is my year. Like I have a starting spot waiting for me at outside mid. Like you just know yeah, from yeah. like the the previous spring and who's coming, who's leaving. I'm like, that's my spot. And um, our our assistant coach comes in. I, I remember this like it was yesterday. He comes into the locker room. He's like, hey man, uh, I just want to let you know like you're playing outside back this year. You're playing right back. <laughs> never played a defensive position in my life. Never played anything underneath the team. Uh-huh. So I've never even played center mid. You know. <laughs> And um, my first response is, I go, no, I'm not. <laughs> and uh, he goes, no, you are. And I go, no, I'm not. So we went back and forth, and you can probably guess what happened. I ended up playing outside back. You don't really get to tell the coach what position you're playing. So I actually started playing outside back just three years ago, uh-huh. my junior year of college. And then, oddly enough, my senior year, I played center back. So okay. this is really only my second full year to be playing outside back. Yeah. Dang, that's crazy. Yeah, it is was, super how, crazy. How do you like playing center back? Center back? So I didn't like it at all. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to play a little bit more more footy, like from playing outside man, outside back, you know, the previous years, you, you get to combine a little bit more, yeah. get up in the attack more. At center back, you kind of just got to be conservative, play it safe, You'll, stay at yeah. home. You don't never never will have a chance to do a step never, over. Never, never. Um, even that's, though, that's even nice. though I, I probably threw a couple in there, yeah, I wasn't <laughs> supposed to. Yeah. But that's what's nice is about outside back is that you can when, like we said, when you do the overlapping runner up there, you do get to do a right, tackle. Yeah, so and then and like your type of like <clears throat> fast, athletic, you know, like that smart player, you yeah. can pick up that position. Yeah, uh, yeah, outside back definitely. Once I made the switch to outside back, uh, my coaching staff, myself, and and my. <clears throat> the people close to me were like, why has nobody figured out that this is the position you're supposed to be playing the yeah. entire time? Um, but, I mean, I, I, uh, my club team, you know, we, we weren't very good, and, and my high school team wasn't as successful as, as we wanted to be sometimes. And so you put your you better yeah. players in the tag. It's just, just kind of how it happened. So, um, Bo, but, but playing center back was, was so weird for me. Um, I was – faster and more athletic than than most of the people mm-hmm. that I played against so it ended up working out for me pretty well I had a really good senior year actually yeah um but looking back and, and thinking about it I probably missed some some tactical moments yeah where yeah. I ended up just having to chase somebody down because I kept them on sides <laughs> but um uh, you, 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 your speed could like yeah, help you out yeah so I mean I was really just back there running and chasing down kids <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's good. And then so, um, it's, it's, I was like the exact same way too. I was like an attacking player and forward in college. I was number nine. And I got. You used to play the nine? Yeah, played oh nine. my God. And then I was like winger, college, PDL stuff. And then, yeah, I slowly got. Yeah, back. literally my entire career, I started out as a striker, went to the wing, then to the 10, and then to outside back, then to center back. So, like, literally every year, I just progressively worked my way down <laughs> to center back yeah. from the nine. And now I'm back at outside mid, where I'm where I'm supposed to be. Uh, I'm sorry, outside back. Yeah, I'm supposed to be. Um, yeah, that's funny. And then so, how did you go? Because if your team wasn't like one of the best in Oklahoma, how did you go from that being? I'm sure you're one of the better teams on that team. But how did you right. get? Because um, you went to ORU. Yeah. So how did you get that scholarship or, or spot on that team? Yeah. From playing so, on a team that's smaller. So my my college my path to college is is one of my my one of my craziest stories I have. So, like you said, my, my high school team wasn't wasn't um, one of the better ones in the state. Mm-hmm. Um, my club team wasn't su- successful. We didn't go to a lot of um, tournaments and showcases and stuff like that. And so, um, I was not I was not recruited out of high school. Mm-hmm. Um, there were a couple um, Division two schools, NAIA schools, um, stuff like that, who had offered me. Um, some positions, um, but I didn't have any um, Division One offers, mm-hmm. and so uh, my junior year of high school, um, I was looking to go to a Division Two school in Oklahoma, mm-hmm. and one of my buddies um, that I played club with really wanted to play Division One soccer. Like, of course, like everybody does, they always want to play Division One soccer, 
and uh, he he kept trying to get me to go um, to these ID camps, mm -hmm. and uh, I was like, all right, whatever, I'll go. I was like, I mean, I'm I'm already verbally committed, you know, to another school, but you know, I, I, I might as well go um, see what this is all about. I'll just go because he wants me to go, whatever. Yeah. So my junior year of high school, I end up going to Georgetown University for for an ID camp. So. Georgetown, you know, <laughs> the guy who who has not had, you know, on paper a successful soccer career mm -hmm. goes to Georgetown University. For those of you who don't know, Georgetown is always one of the most prestigious soccer schools. Yeah. Whenever you think of college soccer, you think of Georgetown University. And at the time in high school, I didn't really know. I wasn't like this massive soccer fan yeah. who knew everything about college and about professional. And I was just, you know, a typical guy from Oklahoma playing soccer. <laughs> so... Um, ended up going anyways, and, and it was really a massive reality check from me. I had grown up in club, being the best player on the team, high school, best player on the team, one of the best players on the team. And then, so I'm, at this point, I, I really struggled with being just super arrogant and super cocky um, on the soccer field, because I, I didn't play, you know, most of the people that I was around, I was as good or better than, and and the competition that we played with, I was like, guys just aren't that much better than me if they are better than me. And so I wasn't really open to the soccer world yet. Yeah. And so my junior year, I go to this soccer camp at Georgetown University. And at the end of it, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I know two things. One, I suck. And two, <laughs> everybody else is way better than me. Yeah. And it was really like really a slap in the face, like a wake up call. And actually, so we were designated coaches for that week. And... Um, at the end of it, they're like, "Hey, um, we'll be we'll be getting in contact with you guys. We'll be sending you an email, you know, letting you know how we did, our recommendations and stuff like this." And and I'm home for a couple of days, ended up getting an email from one of the coaches at Georgetown University, and he had said some things like, um, "You know, you're athletic, fast, explosive, um, decent in front of goal." You know, at this time I was still playing in the attacking position, and he goes, "I think you would be a very good candidate for most Division three soccer schools." Oh. And so that is really like the changing point of my soccer career because this whole time I, you know, growing up, you're like, oh, like I want to be a professional soccer player, mm -hmm. but you don't really know what that means. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and so um, I get this letter from Georgetown University. I print it out and I hang it up on my door mm -hmm. that says, you are a good candidate for most Division three soccer programs. And that was really the, the turning point of my soccer career. I, I really changed my mindset. I, I started working harder. I started having a new outlook on it, um, putting in the extra training sessions and really starting to know, hey, like, you're not where you want to be yet. You're not as good as you think you're you like are. You're like 17, 18? Yeah, so I would, I would have been 17. Okay. That's 17. So I think it was that's that That's good because, I mean, a lot of players will go – that are used to being the big fish in the small pond. Yeah. And they go to that, have the reality <clears throat> check, and then deny it. You yeah. Know? And be like, yeah. Oh, oh, no, I just didn't play. And then right. you like took it, and you're like, you accepted the fact it's like, no, I'm not as good as I thought I was. Yeah. And then so yeah, now, definitely. It's, yeah, that's, it's, it's hard to do that. You know? It was, it was, but I'm, I'm so glad I went to that camp because um, I wouldn't be where I am today yeah. if I didn't get that kind of criticism and if I didn't take it. Like I did, um, I was on my way to a, to a very small Division two school in Oklahoma who have not been very successful over the past um, four years or so. So um, that was really crazy. So I started to, to change my mindset, started to change my attitude, just started working extremely hard, knowing I wasn't there yet. And that same buddy who still wanted to play Division one soccer mm -hmm. was like, hey, uh, I'm going to another ID camp. I'm like, dude, like I told you, I'm, I'm, I'm verbally committed to, you know, another school. Yeah. Like I, I can't be going to these other ones. And he ends up calling his mom, who called my mom. <laughs> so he pretty much told on me and was like, hey, like I really want you to go with me. I don't want to go by myself. I'm like, dude, whatever, I'll go. Yeah. So we end up going just two hours down the road to Oral Roberts University for an ID camp. And like I said earlier, like I wasn't too familiar with college soccer. Yeah. Um, I didn't even know that we had two Division One schools in Oklahoma, ORU and TU, Tulsa. And um, so I ended up going to this ID camp. And um, well, during, there's, So there's no D1 schools in Oklahoma City? No, it's just oh. it's just TU and ORU. I don't know. Yeah, I thought yeah. there'd be a few D1 schools over there. No, no, a lot of colleges, but none of them are Division One. Yeah. Huh. 
Okay, yeah. so you came over to Tulsa and you did the ID camp. Yeah, so I, I went to ORU for this ID camp and I was really just there for, for my friend, um, JP. And um, I ended up having like the best performance I could have ever dreamed of. Really? Like I just remember like literally every time I was playing an attacking position, obviously. And I just remember during like the scrimmages, we do some small sided and, and uh, big field stuff. And I remember like every time I touched the ball, I'd score. Like, I swear, like, I meant to cross it one time and it went in. And <laughs> just like, one of those days. Yeah, just like, I meant to swing with my right and my left foot hit it in. Just like, <laughs> always having one of those days. And I, I remember specifically um, the head coach, uh, Ryan Bush, who's still the head coach now, um, he ended up pulling me out in the middle of, like, a, like a small-sided game. It was like, like, who are you? Where are you from? Like, what are you doing here? You're, like, just kind of, like, wanting to get yeah. to know me. And, and I always find that comical because I was a kid who grew up an hour and a half down the road. Yeah. And the Division One coach in that state didn't know who I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that's nothing on them. That's on me. Like, yeah. I, I just wasn't good enough. You know, mm -hmm. looking back, I, I wasn't highly recruited. I wasn't a good enough soccer player. So it's funny that that happened. And then he's like, who are you? I'm like, well, I literally <laughs> live like an hour that way. <laughs> And uh, so um, after the ID camp, he ended up offering me a, uh, a walk-on spot right then and there. Wow. And um, of course, it was Division One soccer, and and I had kind of come to the realization, like, hey, like I might not be a Division One soccer player right now. Like, there's still things I got to improve on. There's still things I got to work on. This might be the opportunity. And so I, I took the walk-on spot. And, and a lot of people don't know um, how that process works. You know, a lot I. I was a Division One soccer player, and a lot of people are like, oh, you went D1 and all this stuff. You're like, well, you don't know that I, I walked on. Like, I didn't even get scholarship yeah. until my junior year. Uh -huh. Yeah, so so that's that's kind of interesting. So I walked on for two years, and but um, ended up going to ORU and having a very, very successful career. That's that's crazy. That is it. So you're a friend. You owe your friend a lot. I do. I do. And you know what's crazy? Uh -huh. That friend ended up walking onto ORU with me and ended up quitting after his friend, really? after his freshman year. Yeah. Wow. That is a pretty. That is a crazy story. It's, yeah. It was. It's that. unbelievable. I I remember I um. I remember I I got back into the car with my buddy after the thing and and I was kind of like not disappointed. I just kind of had this look on my face. He's like, "Yo, like, congrats! I saw you talking to the coach. Like, you've played really well. Like." Mm -hmm. Are you not excited? And I was like, honestly, dude, like, I'm not really excited because, like, I'm going to come back in the fall and he's going to be like, who is this kid? That's not oh. the same kid that was at the ID yeah. camp. So I played just out of my mind. It was really. So that's crazy. So wait, you said that he offered the walk-on spot at the ID camp? or was it just like, I don't remember the conversation specifically. It I, was quick. I think it was like, hey, we want to get you on campus for, for a visit. And shortly after, you know, just a couple emails, just one visit, I was I was verbally committed and, and going to ORU. That's crazy. Yeah. That was crazy. And it's, it is, it's like, and I like the two, like, contrast between the uh, Georgetown ID camp. Right. And, I, and that's honestly what it, I tell people, too. It's like, it doesn't matter if you have one bad tryout or one team's like, no, you're trash. Like, because it's like, you, all it takes is one good weekend, yeah, one no, good it, trial. It doesn't, it doesn't matter at all. Yeah, like, yeah. I went to one of the best college programs in the country and they told me I was a Division Three soccer player. Yeah. <laughs> and then I go to another Division One program, and he wants me on the team, you know, right then and there. So it, it really doesn't matter. And and all it is is about your mindset and your, your how you receive that. I took that from Georgetown University as motivation. I hung it up on my door mm -hmm. for months. I and like I made that. sure every time I walked in my room, every time I walked out of my room, I knew somebody told me that I wasn't good enough and I was going to prove them wrong. Yeah. So. And then you said you started working really hard, like it was just at your team training, were you working out in the gym, were you doing like any extra stuff, um, or so, were you just focused more in general? So I had I had a really, really bad attitude in high school. Um, <laughs> I just thought I was just the best soccer player in the country, and, and I was lazy. We would do punishment fitness, and I would walk it. And really? Yeah, yeah, I remember one time specifically, I would walk it. I remember specifically the coach telling the entire team, do not be like Colton, do the fitness. So yeah, so that's just one example of how I was in high school. And so um, that, that really changed. I ended up cap captaining my team my senior year from being that my sophomore year yeah. and my junior year. So I really just started, started working harder, started listening to coaches more, started um, submitting to their authority and, and just 
my new mentality was I'm no longer going to walk this fitness. I'm going to be the first one I like that. who yeah. finishes. And because I mean, I wanted to play soccer. You yeah. know, growing up, I, I want to be a professional soccer player. That's what everybody says in any sport. And so that was my mentality. And and I realized, hey, you're not good enough. So you're going to have to change something. Yeah. You can't just you can't just float by on yeah. the surface. I, I was trying to. I yeah. thought I could. I thought I was good enough. Uh, yeah. But it definitely wasn't. That, that's cool how you made the switch. You realized that from the one Georgetown ID. And that's another thing, too. It was such a, it could have been such a negative setback experience, and you turned it into such a positive for your career, yeah. which is really cool. Yeah, and, and I didn't even want to go. I was, yeah. I was, I already had plans to, to go somewhere else. And yeah. if it wasn't for my buddy JP, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have <laughs> gone to Georgetown. Money. Yeah, I would tell him his mom <laughs> that I wouldn't go with him. Um, I wouldn't have got that criticism from Georgetown, and I wouldn't have been able to go play Division One soccer at mm -hmm. ORU. So that's cool. Yeah, that and was then crazy. so you summer, you know, you're going into ORU. You're transitioning now from a smaller high school, smaller uh, club um, team to now a D1 soccer yeah. program. How was that transition, and how'd that first year go? Um. So yeah, the transition was was massive. You you remember taking the the transition from club to high school now i remember my freshman year of high school like the ball was just moving so fast and you can't keep up and then by your senior year you're like this game's too slow for me <laughs> and so it was kind of the same transition i went to that my first year at ORU and and i was athletic and i was fast and i could keep up physically but um things things like uh tactical awareness and, and the speed of play those things were were a little a little too fast for me at that point so that first year um, I want to say I was getting maybe 10, 10 minutes a game, 15 minutes a game, just at the very end of the game um, for, for some playing time, yeah. Um, probably just throwing me in there for a breather for the guys who were starting. But, but still as a freshman. Yeah, 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 yeah. Probably, about, probably about 10 minutes the majority of the game. So, yeah. so. Did you score any goals last season? Um, I don't think I did, no. Uh -huh. no. Maybe... maybe uh, the Friday before at training, you might have had one, but not <laughs> yeah. during the game, no. Uh, um, and then, uh, but obviously you did well enough that you you proved to your coach that you'd be on the field. Yeah, the so games. so my freshman year, I talked about my playing time. My, my sophomore year, it, it went up from there. Um, I was getting in every game. I felt like I was starting to, to get the feel of things. I could tell that I was... I was getting the hang of the speed of play. I was I was I was doing well athletically, and um, because of how successful uh, my sophomore year was in that summer, um, I, that's what I told you. I came into my junior year like like I have a starting spot now. Like I've earned it. A senior had graduated. Like it's 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 my turn now as a yeah. junior. That's great. and again like the same type of thing. Like your coach telling you that could have been like. No, I'm, I'd rather be on the bench than play outside back. Right. But you took it. Well, again. yeah. <laughs> At first, At it first, was. At first, it was a yeah. <laughs> it was a no. It was a hard. We fought. We fought about it for a while, mm -hmm. and then just I mean, just a couple of weeks in, you know, it just almost came natural. Like I, I, I felt like this is where I'm supposed. To. There was a lot of things I had to work on tactically. Yeah. You know, switching to a new position, um, but I, I was just like, man, I just feel so much better here. And so did you? So you liked it then? Yeah. I did like. Yeah, I enjoyed it so much. That's good. Um, would you say that's your favorite? Like, if you could pick, ideally, like you could play any position, like, would you still pick outside back? I think I would still pick outside. I think I'd still pick the position where you run the most on the field. <laughs> I, st yeah. I still think I'd pick outside back. Yeah, I, I like the I like the rewarding one v one defending. Like at first, I, did, I was like, I don't want to defend. I yeah, don't but then like I like the matchup of like trying to shut down the guy. Yeah, it's just you and the, that attacker. There's there's something different about being one on one defending on, on the wing. And you winning that battle, yeah. and it's just there's something different about that. <laughs> it's yeah, it definitely is. It's challenging, but it's good. It's um, and then so you were playing center back your senior year. Yeah, like you said how how did that year go? So that year for myself personally went very 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 well. Mm -hmm. I I just was the game slowed down for me. Um, I was out of position, you know, where your passing percentages should be higher. Yeah. You know, at, at center back, so I just, I was um, completing my passes. I was, I was just way more athletic than everybody, faster than everybody, which helps a lot in playing center back. And um, I, I just tell people, it, I don't think it really had so much to do with me. I think just the mentality of being a senior mm -hmm. just kind of changes things. At the college level, seniors just, just seem to get things done on the soccer field that 
maybe a more talented freshman or sophomore just can't. You know, there was there was more on the line for me. Ever since I I had that mentality change, you know, back in high school, I'd always just since then I, I've always just tried to work extremely hard and, and be a leader and and uh, try to do something for the team. And so that mentality just kind of helped me uh, play center back. My athleticism was definitely helped the most, but just yeah. the mentality of being seen like I'm gonna go fight for my teammates, like that just that just seemed to seem yeah. to help a lot. That's good. And then so following that season, did you have any pro opportunities? Like how did how was that? Because this is it's tough when you're not at like the MLS draft level, yeah, like right, to go pro. Right. So how was that from ending your senior year to basically getting? Yeah. A so um, one of my biggest issues with playing center back was. So I was successful at the at the Division One level playing center back, but I knew at the professional level I wasn't going to be a center back, and so and, and like you said, I wasn't going to be you know a top draft pick. I wasn't going to be uh, one of the highest recruited players, and um, especially not playing center back. Mm -hmm. And so I I really wanted to play outside back to give myself a better opportunity to go, to go to the next level, and you know from my coach's decision they wanted to play me at, at center back. And so um, I kind of struggled with that, but um, I, would, I don't know if because of that I didn't have very many opportunities. I think maybe I could have if I if I had the season that I had playing center back. If I had that season playing outside back, I think that I would have maybe had some more opportunities. But um, I came on trial with the with the Roughnecks that that spring um, after my my season ended. Um, I came on trial and I was here for. Uh, maybe a month or so. Mm -hmm. I was on a month or so um, on trial, and um, it was actually so. Um, this was like in like March or April uh -huh. that I was here, and so they had just signed new contracts because you you start your, your yeah. contracts in January. So I had came, you know, two or three months after they had already signed the contract. So they weren't in a situation to sign me even if they wanted to. And so um, I was there for a little while, and I was like, "Hey, um, I'm about to go back home. It's about to be summer. You know, if if you guys aren't aren't interested, I'm going to go back home and play PDL." And so that's what I did. I went I went home that summer, and I played uh, for OKC Energy U23 team. Um, stayed at home, played PDL, and so and then I came back. Um, to ORU to start my master's mm -hmm. and I took a grad assistant position for the men's soccer team and so I was kind of doing that and really just waiting for for an opportunity you know um, kind of training and, and just waiting and um, Are you training with the team every day no w with ORU yeah no I was actually on staff coaching okay. so helping <laughs> so I was trying to every time I try to hop into a session my coach would be like Colton get out of the session like <laughs> go set up some cones or something <laughs> and I just every time I could I'd hop in some technical yeah. work and and uh, my, my favorite thing was um, whenever somebody got injured and I got to hop yeah. in and play um, oh, but yeah so for 11 11. yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I get to hop in for 11 v 11 sometimes so I did that and then um, so that next year came around and um, my agent, Mission Com agent, he was just uh, a really good buddy of mine who was representing me. Um, had just so Insian took over the team, and um, he just kept uh, just throwing my name at at the team and at the yeah. club. I was like, "Hey, I have this guy. He's a local guy. Um, he's he's a good soccer player. Like you should look into him. You should look into him." And really, just just threw his nose in there for me, and. Um, um, Ended up, Insane ended up reaching out to me. It was like, hey, you know, come, come to the open or come to the open um, ID camp mm -hmm. or the open trial, yeah. whatever they called it. And um, so, so kind of the same thing happened. Just like um, at ORU, I I went to the the open tryout and ended up having a really good trial. Ended up playing well. Um, obviously, <laughs> ended up uh, signing me like literally right after the, the open trial. So that's it was it was a long process. Um, I was on trial, went back home, came back, waited for the open tryouts, went to the open tryouts, and then they signed me right after the open tryouts. That's uh, dang, I didn't, I didn't, I thought that you would finish this your senior year no, this last fall. No, so whenever I graduated, so my soccer, cre uh, soccer ended the first semester of my senior year. Yeah. 
So then I waited that entire second semester and then the first semester of the next year yeah. until January came around. So I waited I waited a full year. Dang, how, and was that, like, how was your mentality in that year overall? Was it like, were you ever thinking, like, I don't know if it's going to work, I should quit? or was it Yeah, like um, I was definitely in a position where, so, you know, the, the new professional soccer leagues in the United States just opened um, championship and league one yeah. and league two and stuff like that. So my mentality kind of was if, if nothing happened for me this time around, um, I would maybe try to reach out to some of those clubs or uh, get uh, my agent in contact with some of those clubs. So I was really just really just patiently waiting. Yeah. Honestly, my, my mentality was I still want to still want to do professional soccer. I just have to wait on the right moment, the right coach, the mm -hmm. right timing. Yeah, and that that's huge. Like what you just said right there. Yeah, is huge. it's so hard. The right team, the right coach, the right environment. Yeah, right? because I mean, you there could be one coach, just like my college career, who thinks you suck, <laughs> and another coach who thinks you're good. So yeah. it's it's all about opportunity. And all all it takes is one coach. Yeah, one exactly. coach. That's all it takes. And there could be even a coach that really thinks you're good, but with no money, no budget, or like he's like, look, I got this many players already. I can't, I can't right. take it. Yeah. And yeah, there's so just, so you really have to find where the stars like I always say when the stars align, when the and stars then that's align. when it like really yeah, goes out. yeah, that's that's really what happened for me. Yeah. Just everything. I mean, I, I I've been in Tulsa for five years now. The clubs in Tulsa, mm -hmm. and so um, I'm a local guy. Um, so yeah, the stars aligned and ended up just working out for me. How was signing that contract? <laughs> oh my gosh! I mean, you I'm sure you remember the yeah. the first day you signed it. It was it's it's incredible. You just I remember thinking like, as soon as um, I had gotten off the phone with the NCN and, and he had offered me a spot on the team and that they were going to sign me and stuff, I just remember like, felt like a weight had lifted off your shoulders almost because you're just like, wow, like I actually did that. Yeah. Like I did it. I made it. Excuse me. And then another thing came out, I was like, wait a second. Now the hard work starts. <laughs> You're like, yeah. oh, I've made it. But like, oh, wait, I haven't done nothing yeah, yet. We're exactly. actually just now getting started. So it was it was kind of weird. I was I was feeling two different emotions. I was feeling content and just overwhelmed with joy that I'm gonna be a professional mm -hmm. soccer player now. Something I've wanted since I was four. Yeah. But I'm like, oh wait, 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 wait. I haven't done anything yet. I, Dude, the, the, the training starts now. I, I like the way I would always say it. it. Was just like how you said the weight off your shoulders. I was like, yeah, I felt like it was more of almost just a relief. Like yeah. finally, literally, like, I did like, it. Oh, thank God, and then, finally. And then, and, then this, and then you're obviously so excited. Everyone's so pumped. You get the message. I feel like everybody else was more excited for me, and I was like, I couldn't be so excited Absolutely. because it was like it's not like I won a championship. It was like I just signed it to now start. Yeah, and yeah. I, I had that realization like shortly after I celebrated. I'm like, wait. What am I celebrating? <laughs> I haven't even trained yet. Yeah. I haven't even made it. I haven't even actually signed my paper yet. He just told me I was gonna sign. So, yeah. I mean, obviously the, there is room to to shout and and enjoy it. But of course, yeah. But you also have to have to realize that it was it's it's just now time to start working. Yeah, it's it's very very weird. Yeah, it's a weird. You have so many different emotions. Like I didn't want to celebrate too much. It is it yeah. Up. But yeah, it is a it's a huge accomplishment. It's really really rewarding and you're pumped. Absolutely, I was I was feeling just so blessed, overwhelmed joy. And how's this season been going? I mean, we're two months now and three months now. Yeah, what are we, are we three months in there? In February. I can't count that. January, 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 February, March. So. Uh, we're like two and a half. Two and a half. Um, yeah, I I remember. I don't know who I was talking to, but at the very beginning, whenever I was telling them it, it's my my rookie season, it's, it's my first year and stuff, um, I think it was actually Sip who had said something like, "Yeah, man, like, because right after the the tryout, it was like tryout. I signed the tryout ended on that Saturday. Mm -hmm. I think Insane called me Sunday and and offered me. So it was like, and then that next, I want to say." I don't remember specifically, but like that week or the week after we started training. I think it was the next week. I think sure, it yeah. was. Honestly, I think it might have been like that Thursday. Yeah, yeah. For some reason, I feel like I had three days off. Like I had like <laughs> seven. Because you guys were hours. still sore. I remember you guys were still yes. sore from that coming in. Yeah, we played we played so much soccer during that open tryout. Mm -hmm. So it was literally like open tryout, sign, training. And I was like, in a span of six days. I didn't know if I was going to play professional soccer too. I'm in a training session. Yeah. So I remember what Sip said. Sip was like, man, it happens. And then you hardly have time 
to take it all in and then you look back and you're X amount of months into training and it just becomes your norm. Yeah. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. It's like, yeah. I, I don't ever remember soaking it in. It just, <laughs> it all happened so quick and now it's just like I wake up every day and I get to go do what I love and I get to wake up every day and go play soccer. So it, it's obviously been incredible. I mean, there's there's nothing else I'd rather be doing right now yeah. than playing soccer. It's a cool job. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun job. Yeah. Um, that's sick. And so obviously, I mean, you don't have the longest pro career because we're just getting started. Right, so, right. Um, yeah, for it's sure. definitely a shorter podcast. But now I'm just going to ask you a few questions about, like, your career so far. And sure. We'll just wrap it up. Um, but, like, what do you think was the best moments of your career? Like, if you could look back over everything, the best oh, were you, like, the highest point you felt? Man. You know, I feel like most people go back towards some, some goals that they scored. I played the the two years where I was really you know a starter for OEL. I was playing in the back. Yeah. So um, I can't think of any. I do remember uh, my was it my sophomore year. Um, we went to the conference tournament, um, which is a, a big deal for for a school. And we were in the semifinals against um, Nebraska Omaha, and we scored an overtime game winning goal that took us to the finals of of the conference tournament. And that was probably the most excited I've ever been in my, I honestly think that I was on the bench. I don't even, I don't even know if I was playing right then, uh-huh. but, but just the, just the fact that we got to celebrate that with the team and going to the conference finals of your tournament or going to the, yeah, um, for your, for your conference, it was, that was just so rewarding. I remember it was just such a big deal for, for our school yeah. and for my teammates, which is why it was a big deal for me. Yeah, you said I got like goosebumps on my arm. I, I love oh, that, dude. the winning. Dude, I remember that. this, uh, I think it was a corner kick, a ball bounced to the top, our center mid struck it from outside the 18, like on the volley, side netting, back post, something crazy, I don't know. So Game, he took, what's crazy? So he, he was on a yellow card from the game. He takes his shirt off after he scores, right? Should be a double yellow card. The referee runs up to him, starts showing him a yellow card, uh-huh. and we start telling him, hey, like we're about to go to the conference finals. He gives the yellow card to another player. Really? He legitimately takes away the yellow card, gives it to somebody else. Don't know if that's supposed to be on camera. But <laughs> yeah, that definitely like, happened. Can't do anything it's about over. it now. Yeah, can't change it. But that Honestly, definitely happened. That's like a Bobby and Bastidos move right there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> on a yellow, do it. On a yellow, it takes because he, he was gonna have to miss the, yeah, the conference yeah. final. That would oh my yeah. So, I bet he regretted that. Like as soon as after he took it, he's like, oh, I should have yeah. done that. But I mean, in that moment though, yeah, I mean, what are yeah. you? You're not thinking. You just scored the game-winning goal and in an overtime. Over, and in overtime, college, it's over. Yeah, it's, it's over. Done. Yeah, 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 it's over. That golden, golden goal. I really like golden goal. Golden like, goal is intense. Yeah, man. Intense. I, there's no. I scored a golden goal. I think I had like two golden goal winners in yeah. my college career, and like just the it's oh, over. Yeah, it's yeah like, there's nothing it matter. It's no like okay, now it's time to focus. It's like right. you're done. You don't have to lock and play defense. Yeah. It's just <laughs> you just get go home. It's the best. Yeah. Um, all right. So that's that is a cool moment. For sure. Yeah. And then uh, I'm guessing you guys probably lost the final. Yeah, we, yeah, that's, we, that's, that's, that's why I didn't throw that in there. Yeah. yeah, we lost. <laughs> uh, what was the lowest period where you're like, I, you know, you know, I always say like your career is like a roller coaster of emotions of highs yeah. and lows. Where was the lowest low that you were at? Man, the lowest low. So I've kind of struggled with, with hip, um, mm-hmm. with hip injuries. I feel like every outside back in the world struggles with <laughs> hip flexors and yeah. groins. Yeah. Um, my junior year summer, Going into my senior year, yeah, that summer, I went and played NPSL for FC Wichita. Mm-hmm. Um, they're the Heartland Conference. They're the best in the Heartland Conference. Yeah, we, were, we were winning every game. Um, that was, was a good team. We, yeah. we play, St. Louis played you guys. Yeah, yeah. So we yeah. actually played you. Yeah. Yeah. In 2017, yeah. yeah. Was that 2017? Was that year? Cause yeah, I, I know yeah, yeah, Louis, yeah. Yeah, 2017. And we played in the Open Cup. We tied three to three. You guys were a good team. Yeah, yeah. We, we had a we had a really really good team. I was starting outside back. Um, we were about to go to our conference tournament. I think we had actually played a game of the conference tournament. We we're about to go to like the conference tournament finals, and I I did my hip flexor. Uh-huh. And so so the this was like at the end of the summer, which is right before I go to college too. Mm-hmm. So I had pulled my my hip flexor. I missed the most exciting part of my NPSL season, yeah. and I thought I was going to miss some of my college season for my senior year. So I was, I was super, super torn, pun intended, <laughs> about, about that injury. 
Um, but it ended up being not as bad as I thought. Uh-huh. Ended up ended up recovering pretty pretty soon after, and I think I only missed. I don't even think I missed any preseason. I just don't think I got to train for preseason. Mm-hmm. So I came into preseason dead. But anyways. It worked out. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it ended up working out. Yeah. It's scary though. It's, especially in college, it's not like, oh, there's always next year. Like that's yeah. the year. It was, it, it was, it was my senior year. Yeah. yeah. That is, that is definitely hard. Yeah, um, injuries, man. Yeah, I, my non-medical like idea about outside backs and hips and groins is that like I feel like in every position in the field, People sprint, run, but the, it's shorter sprints. Like with the outside back is the where you're from, 18 yard box all the way down to the corner flag, and then back, full sprint, <laughs> and, and then back, back. yeah, and then yeah. you're whipping in balls and sprinting back. Yeah. It's just a lot. It has to do something with that. I don't yeah. know, but hip injuries. Yeah, it's tough. And, 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 yeah. and soccer players in general pretty much have hip injuries yeah. too. And then um, last question: If you could go back. And you could talk to yourself at 16. This is going to be good for you. Because oh you said gosh. this is arrogant at 16. Oh my but if you gosh. could go back to your former self at 16, 17, that age, you know, what would you say? What would be your advice for yourself? And we'd have to do another hour-long podcast <laughs> for what I want to tell myself. You'd sit him down and have a long conversation. Yeah, uh, looking back, if I could go tell myself something, I know myself wouldn't even receive it. <laughs> so it wouldn't even, it wouldn't even matter. Um, <laughs> I would probably just try to... Basically, what happened to me later on is just I realized, hey, you're not that good. Hey, there's a lot of really good soccer players. Hey, the soccer world's this big. I would probably just try to communicate that to myself. Say, hey, be humble. Like, there are very, very good soccer players out there. Like, you are going to have to work extremely hard if you want to be a professional soccer player. Because right now, I can tell you that you are nowhere close. Yeah, Nowhere close. And you're going to have to change probably every aspect of of your soccer career if you want to turn your soccer career into something so. <laughs> that's a, that's good that's true i mean like i every player goes through that like i literally had no idea how high the level and how many competitive players there yeah. are in the world yeah like we, it's crazy yeah we didn't play our club team wasn't in a, a very high re, uh, a very high level so even on my team, I was one of the better ones, and then whenever I play against guys, I was one of the better ones. Mm-hmm. Every time I was on the field, so it's just like, yeah, you just kind of get that mentality, like, oh, I'm the best around, mm-hmm. and then you go to Georgetown University, and you go, oh, I'm the worst around. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, and I that was something even going to the pro level. I was like, oh, once you go to the pro level, like you're pro, no, no worries, but you don't realize how many good players are out of contract right now. Oh yeah, trying to get yeah. your spot. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's that's something that that kind of humbles me today. Is like there is more than definitely a better soccer player yeah. out of contract right now, and you are under contract right now. So just yeah, just kind of just kind of walking in that mentality of being thankful and blessed. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, um, but and then anything you want to say? You got some people watching. Anything, yeah, anything hopefully. You um, shout out to JP. <laughs> Big shout out to you, JP. Big shout out to JP <laughs> to get me to where I am today. Um, shout out to Cutter again for leaving our club team. And, and then coming back and us accepting you with open arms. Uh, shout out to my parents for always supporting me, all my friends back home. Last but not least, all glory to God, always. And I uh, think that's it. That's sweet. Well, this is Colton Haskin. Again, all, like always, social media, everything is in the description. You want to go follow Colton. Um, thanks for being on the podcast. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah.